As part of a growing movement to encourage young women to enter the sciences, the Women's Studies Program and the Career Services and Placement Center at Washington State University sponsored a career workshop in late 1979. It was funded by the National Science Foundation and attracted over 150 women students. Astronaut Sally Ride keynoted the workshop. She has a doctorate in physics from Stanford and is a scientist in NASA's space shuttle program. WSU's Dr. Sue Ritter talked with Dr. Ride about the space program. What kind of training did you have to go through to uh, enter the space program as an astronaut? Well, I think that um, first you need to understand the, the selection process. We, um, about two and a half years ago, two years ago, NASA announced that they were accepting applications for, for the astronaut program. And they got applications from uh, the military as well as from civilians, from test pilots as well as from scientists. And they decided to accept people in, in both those areas. So um, when they did select this, this last group, they selected 35. They selected 20. 20 of the 35 were scientists. And of those 20, 14 were civilians. The civilian scientists and the military test pilots, once we got to NASA, it turned out that they, they decided to send us through an identical training program. Um, it was originally scheduled to last for two years, and they, they cut it short. They decided that we were doing such a great job, they cut it down to about a year and three or four months. But we, uh, we spent six or eight months at the beginning in, in classroom, um, three to six hours a day, really, on space shuttle systems, avionic systems, uh, electrical systems, how the fuel cells work, how the engines work. Um, and that, that was really a lot of introductory classes that we're just now um, kind of using the knowledge that we, that we got in those classes to delve a little bit deeper into the various systems. We also had a lot of uh, science classes. Like, I'm in astronomy and physics. We had astronomy classes, physics classes, geology classes, oceanography classes, um, life sciences classes, medicine, uh, and everyone in the group had to take all of those classes. So I had to, I had to suffer through all the classes, all the same classes the pilots did. They suffered through astronomy classes as well as me suffering through, um, you know, avionics classes. And really, um, once, the, once the classroom, the work in the classroom ended, we got to do a lot more flying and a lot more of the training that you might associate with the traditional uh, astronaut astronaut training, astronaut program. We fly around a lot in, in T-38s, which are Air Force, Air Force training jets, where you, you have to wear a, a parachute and an oxygen mask and the whole thing. You, you pull your canopy down over you, and you've got the controls in the plane. And uh, um, we fly, everyone flies about 15 hours a month in that, the pilots as well as the scientists. The pilots to keep up their, their flying proficiency, the scientists really to get an idea of um, what it's like to be part of an air crew, how to, how to use the radios, how to navigate, um, and to appreciate the problems that a pilot has. I had had no piloting experience at all before I, before I came to, to NASA and joined the program. And they're, now they're, although they're not officially making a pilot out of me, they're letting me do a lot of flying. We also do some, we took uh, scuba training, which we need to, before we could work in the, the water facilities where we do a lot of the weightlessness training. We do most of that underwater. You get into a, to a pressurized spacesuit, go underwater, and then work out all the procedures that you're gonna be, gonna be using on orbit, and practice using the tools, and uh, that, that kind of thing. If you had no training, um, pertinent to your uh, new job before you um, became an astronaut. What made you decide to become an astronaut, and what kind of application procedure did you go through? Well, I, had <laughs> I hadn't really planned my career around being an astronaut. I had planned to, go into, planned to go into physics and to do research in physics, get a job at a university, do a little bit of research and a little bit of teaching. Um, the application procedure, I was about to finish up my PhD and it was time to, time to go look for a job. And it was exactly at that time that NASA asked for, for applications. And I heard about it through the Center for Research on Women 
at Stanford, NASA had, had uh, sent out word to women centers and minority centers that they, they were encouraging women and minority applications. So it was really, it was really through them that I, uh, that I heard about it. And after that, the applications procedure was essentially just sending in a postcard saying, please send me an application, and then filling out really a very standard uh, government application form. There was no room on it to convince them I was exactly the person that they wanted. You know, it was, it was a, pretty much a straight form with a list of references. And they, they weeded down the field from there. Well, maybe you could tell us something about the space program, the space shuttle program specifically, and how you will be involved in it, what kind of research you will conduct, how you'll contribute to the program as a whole. <laughs> well, the, um, the space shuttle program is, of course, the, really the, the main thrust of the space program through the 1980s. It's, uh, it's the main direction that the United States is going to be taking for the next 10 or 15 years, probably. And it'll, uh, it's scheduled for its first launch sometime, probably late spring or early summer of 1980, next year. Um, the things that I'll be doing uh, when, I, when I go up, I'll be one of the mission specialists, which is a scientist, scientist astronaut. A crew is typically composed of two pilot astronauts and then between one and five or six uh, scientist astronauts. And then the number of mission specialists depends on exactly what you're going to be doing in space. The space shuttle is a, it's an orbital vehicle, so it launches from a launch pad and then it stays in orbit for about a week. Um, could be two weeks, could be three weeks, and it depends entirely on the type of mission that they're flying. And then it uh, returns to Earth and lands and it is ready to go back up again in, in a couple weeks. Um, I think really one of, the, one of the main advantages of the space shuttle program and one of the main differences between the shuttle program and programs that we've had in the past is that it does go up, it, it goes up and it comes down and goes up again and comes down again and goes up again and comes down again. And what you do, it, each time it comes down, you, you open it up and take out all the experiments that you had just put in orbit and you put in a whole whole fresh set of them. So it's an opportunity to really do a lot of research in not very much time uh, and with a, with a minimum of, of effort and um, expense. And the, the scientist on board is in charge of operating whatever experiments are on board, is also in charge of, uh, for example, if, if your mission is to deploy a, a satellite. All satellites are going to be launched on the space shuttle. They're going to be stuffed into the cargo bay, and you just reach in and pull them out and send them into orbit. The mission specialist is the one that, that does that, does the deploying of the satellites. And if you've decided that what, you, what you've gone up to do is to retrieve a satellite, if there's a satellite in orbit that's either broken or it's time to retrieve it to collect the data, then the, the mission specialist operates the, the controls to go out and grab that satellite and put it back into the, into the payload bay. Um, you might also operate a telescope if a telescope is what's flying, or a Earth resources experiment if, you're, if your uh, job, that particular mission, is to look down at the ground and find out, uh, say, look for oil resources or something like that. Uh, the mission specialist would be monitoring those experiments. Do you know at this time any specific experiments that you'll be in charge of conducting? Not yet. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't been assigned to specific flights yet, and I don't think that... Um, Really, they've assigned the crew to the first flight. It's John Young and Bob Crippen are going to fly on the on the first flight, and that's the the only crew that they've assigned. Um, once the space shuttle gets going, it'll go up 40 or 50 times a year, and it'll get to be very dull very fast. But they they're not going to assign um, crews for the later flights, probably until the first one goes up, or at least several months downstream. And until I get assigned to a specific flight, I'm not going to know what experiments. I'm specifically involved in. I think that uh, one of the things that became very clear in the first year or so of the training is that they, they don't want people to specialize in just one area. They don't want me to, to um, kind of put all my eggs in one basket and on say that I'm only going to go up if there's a laser experiment on board or only going to go up if there's an X-ray telescope on board. They want me to be able to operate any experiment that comes along and, you know, and do a good job of it and understand that experiment. So they're trying to help me broaden the educational base that I have so that I have the, have the capability of understanding a, a whole set of experiments. Do you spend all your time 
um, preparing to be an astronaut, or do you have your own research program that you carry out on a daily basis? I have my own research program. NASA's um, been very good about encouraging the scientists in the astronaut program to keep up their keep up their research, keep up the research that they were doing before they joined the program. And I haven't been doing probably as much research as I should or as I would like to, um, but that's because I'm so fascinated by the astronaut program that I'm spending most of my time doing that. I have published published a few papers since I've come to NASA, but um, I, I haven't been doing as much research as I would, for example, if I weren't in the astronaut program. Could you tell me something about the research that you're involved in? Well, the research, the research that I'm doing, which has no connection with my involvement in the astronaut program, it's not a requirement for being in the program, and it's, uh, they're not insisting that I carry it on, but they are, they're helping me with it um, as far as giving me the opportunity to, to do it and a little bit of the time to do it. I've been, been um, doing some theoretical work with free electron lasers, which is a, it's a new kind of, new kind of laser um, that has, it doesn't involve the use of atoms to, as the lasing medium. It uses only free electrons and uh, magnetic field to get the stimulated radiation. Maybe you could comment on, on, a, on a few of the experiments that you know of that may be conducted in space. Um, I heard you mention before a, a beam builder that might be a part of the apparatus that is utilized in space. Um, do you want to comment on that? Sure. The, the beam builder is uh, something that will probably be tested on an early shuttle flight. It's a, it's a concept for building very lightweight structures, the beams for large structures in space. Um, basically what it is is a, <laughs> a black box that you, you stick a, a roll of pre-cut aluminum foil in one end and a uh, aluminum foil beam comes out the other end. When you're, when you're up in space, when you're in orbit, everything is weightless. So you can build a, a 20 kilometer by 20 kilometer structure that doesn't really have to be very strong because it doesn't have to support any weight. All it has to do is, is be fairly rigid and <laughs> aluminum foil may be, may be perfectly good. Um, I think that that's one of the things that the space shuttle is gonna be, uh, is gonna be testing. It's gonna be very good for experiments just like that particularly in the next, the next couple years, testing out concepts for just how do you go about building a, building a space station? How do you go about building a space colony? How do you go about building a solar power satellite? And there are a lot of things. It's, it's easy to say, let's go build a solar power satellite. But what you've got to do first is say, okay, how are we going to build it? And I think that's one of the things the space shuttle is going to be very useful for.